Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a massive hits and misses video. This is going to be a crazy product update. I have so many products to touch on with you guys. I'm so excited to get right into it. This video is also super special because it is in collaboration with my friend, Samantha March. You guys probably know her already, but if not, she is so sweet. She is one of the most honest and kind people here on YouTube, in my personal opinion. And she does a great job with doing, you know, hauls, reviews, really cool tag videos. And she's the creator of the Will I Buy It series which of course is super popular. She is also doing a hits and misses over on her channel. So don't forget to check out that video after this one. I will link her channel in the description box below. If you're new from Samantha's channel, hello, it is so nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by and clicking on this video. I really hope you enjoy my content. And without further ado, let's get on to my hits and misses of these recent Sephora products. The first product I'm gonna be updating you guys on is the Too Faced Sex on the Peach set. I believe that's what it was called if I'm not mistaken it was something like that anyways I no longer have the box that it came in but these were all three products that were inside we do have a mattifying primer we have a mattifying setting spray and then we have the peach perfect powder which is also a mattifying product all of them have that peachy kind of fig smell to them. The powder, I was actually super surprised at how much of that scent is actually in there. When you apply it to the skin, it does have a little bit of a whiff of that peachy, like figgy kind of smell. It's not terrible. In fact, I personally enjoy it. It does smell a tad synthetic but it's not that bad. So for me, I don't mind it, but I'm also not aversive to scents. If you are, this probably will bother you. So just keep that in mind. But this powder with the performance, it's lovely. I feel like it does a great job of mattifying, but it doesn't kill the foundation finish underneath. So this is perfect for that. I love it. I love that this kit comes with a full size of this powder because out of all the three products, this is my standout favorite. Now let's talk about the other two products. These are both okay in my opinion. The first one is the Peach Mist. This is the mattifying setting spray. This is one that also has a bit of a smell. The Mister is similar to this one here on the Hangover RX. I feel like they both have the same kind of stream. They're both like moderate. They're not super fine, but they're moderate for sure. And out of the two, by far, I like the Hangover one better. And the reason is, is just because for some reason this one is a tad too mattifying for me. The Hangover RX one will set, but it won't be as mattifying as the Peach one. This one also has an odd little like thing inside. Can you guys hear that? Whereas the Hangover one doesn't have that. It's just the fluid. So I don't know why it has that weird thing in it, but it bothers me so much and it kind of cheapens it in my opinion but this one also has that smell similar to the powder, but a little bit more concentrated in this one. This I think would be perfect for oilier skin types. I am a normal skin type personally, so I feel like this is one that mattifies just a touch more than I would like, but if you're oily, I think you would love this one. This next product and the last one in this set is the Primed and Peachy Cooling Matte Primer. This is one that I actually didn't mind. I do think it is still kind of okay though. It's not something that I was super blown away with. I do think it does a really good job of mattifying a little bit not too much but just a little bit and that cooling sensation is really nice I will say the scent of this is also pretty prominent just like the other two products I talked about but I do think that out of the three the powder is by far the one that I was like wow this is really something that's impressive if you're super oily you'll probably have to really pile this on because it worked really well for my normal skin but if you want like some actual oil control this will probably be maybe not enough for you but I do like the cooling effect of this this is something that's very unique to this product and I do like as well that this one has the scent but again I'm not sense aversive if you are it will bother you it is pretty strong in this one the next product I want to talk about is this Lancome bronzer this is actually called Le French glow I believe it is the nude glow creator in number one light liberté this one has all of these French words kind of embossed into the powder but I love this bronzer because it's a really nice gorgeous tone for summer this this is one that the brushes you can pick up a lot of product at one swipe so go very light-handed with this one I do like how there's like little shades of different bronzer colors that you can kind of mix together or keep it separate in my opinion I did mix it together because I thought it would be way too hard to keep some of those separate especially this one is like nearly like a white beige so 
I wanted to blend it all together anyway and when I did do that it was a gorgeous shade so I'm going to show you on my hand here so here is the swatch of this bronzer you guys it's definitely a cooler toned I would say a little bit of a reddish undertone bronzer it looks gorgeous on the skin and this is one that I think I'm just so glad it's in my collection. Next, I have another bronzer to talk about. This is from Dior, and this is the Dior Skin Mineral Nude Bronze Wild Earth in the shade Warm Terra. This is one, you guys, that also is a very gorgeous bronzer. As you can see, this one has more of a caramelness to it. It's a little bit warmer toned, and I'm going to swatch this one as well and show you guys. So here is this one, you guys. As you can see, a lot more of like a caramel, kind of like chocolatey bronzer. It's also very flattering on the skin. I do have it on my cheeks right now. So it is that kind of like gorgeous bronzy flush that you see on my skin. It is super, super nice, very buildable as well. And this one has a little bit of a sheenness to it. It's really, really gorgeous. Again, with my favorite bronzer brush, this is one I have to go light handed with as well. I use my Marc Jacobs, the bronze bronzer brush, which I like, but for something like this, it picks up the powder really quickly. So make sure either you're doing a light hand application or you're using more of a diffused hairbrush, but this is a lovely one. Now let's talk about a face palette from NARS. I did pick this one up not too long ago. This is the Summer Lights face palette. And as you can see, this one is super gorgeous. The packaging is amazing. When you open it up, you do have four eyeshadows on the top row, a highlighter and a bronzer. So this is one you guys that very much surprised me. These like eyeshadows on the top are gorgeous like sheeny colors they're definitely not matte they just have a nice like glowy sheen to them you do have to build them up a little bit i find to kind of get more of that pigment through versus the glow but once you have a couple layers on your lid it looks beautiful and it lasts all day and i love these colors for every day i've been wearing this constantly so i love this one the highlight is really nice as well and the bronzer is a touch cool toned actually I don't know if you guys can see that on my finger. It's a little bit light, but this is one that's a lighter bronzer. So it's very buildable. And for me, I do have to put about two to three layers of this one for it to show up on my skin. So this one is fairly light. Out of the two bronzers I showed you prior, this one is by far a lot lighter. So just keep that in mind. This one is super cute though. Love the packaging of this one. Okay, now let's talk about a deodorant that I actually talked about on my Instagram. This isn't technically a high-end or a luxury product, but I just wanted to kind of update you you guys on my thoughts on this this is something that I found in the drugstore and I was really surprised when I saw it it's from secret and it's the aluminum free deodorant so I actually had no idea that secret came out with an aluminum free product I do know that their deodorants do have aluminum if you just get them off their permanent line this is when I found in the drugstore and I was like I wonder if this is any good because we are hearing about the dangers of aluminum in deodorants all the time so I was like maybe this is something that I should try out and sure enough I picked it up I have been trying it out. The scent I have is called Day Lily. And if I'm honest, you guys, it doesn't smell at all that good. Um, like it says it's dye free. It is a solid clear deodorant. It's not fluid, but it just smells weird. It's not fresh. It's not bad. It's just kind of like musty, <laughs> almost like old. It's hard to explain, but it's not like the best smell ever. And I tested this in Vegas actually. So that was like the perfect environment to do so because it was so hot. And I just found like, you know, your armpits are so wet. You feel like you have like such perspiration and like, you know that you have like marks, like you just have that feeling. So this is something that just didn't even, I know it wasn't supposed to do that, but it also didn't really cut my odor that much. It did a little bit. I mean, I wasn't reeking or anything, but after about four to six hours, I could smell myself kind of getting a little bit not fresh. So I was like, shoot, this isn't that great. Unfortunately, I'm probably not even going to finish it. I'm just going to say bye because this isn't good, but... Yeah, it's worth a try if you're interested, but if you're like an excessive sweater, this definitely won't cut it. I just think, I don't know. It's definitely a pass. Next, let's talk about a moisturizer I've been testing. This is from Fresh and it is the Lotus Youth Preserve Dream Face Cream. And you guys, this one smells so lovely. It's like peaches. It smells gorgeous. Oh, this is so good. I actually was using this for a little while before I talked about this on my channel because it's a skincare product. I wanted to make sure I had a very thorough review on skincare. So I've been using this for a number of weeks and I love it. It's so nice for the summer nights for a night cream. So I use this at night. I do like that it is moisturizing and hydrating, but it's not heavy. It doesn't sit on the skin at all. So it just plumps up the skin, keeps you hydrated, and it doesn't 
leave that heaviness feeling that could be too much in the summer months. Next, I wanna talk about a concealer. This is from Tom Ford. This is the Emotion Proof Concealer. I talked about this in my luxury haul on this channel and you guys mentioned that Tom Ford is owned by Estee Lauder, who also owns Smashbox, who also owns Clinique, who also owns, um, what's the other one, uh, MAC. That's what I was trying to get at. So there might be some interchanging of formulas between the brands, which is really too bad. But what I can say, so I'm not positive because I don't own the Smashbox concealer. I'm not positive that it's an exact dupe. But what I can say about this one is that this one is more of a runny formula. It's more lightweight. I do think that it has probably about moderate coverage. It wouldn't cover something super, super heavy, like bright redness or anything, but it does a good job of covering mild acne, mild redness. I put this today on my chin area. I have tested it under the eye and what I can tell you is that you have to go incredibly light-handed. I'm not a fan of the concealer technique under the eye anyway. I don't typically do it and I don't know if that's just going to change as my preferences change but I don't like that feeling. I rarely have a concealer not crack on me and just emphasize what I already have. So this is something that I've just used to cover acne at the chin and so far it's done a great job. It's lasted all day when I set it. When I don't set it, it tends to move a little bit as I sweat throughout the day. But once I set it, it works way better. This shade is called number three pale dune and it is a touch light. So it just about works for my chin, but anything lighter would be too light for testing purposes. I used it once under the eye and I found that it was pretty okay. Considering that it's a lightweight formula, it didn't crack on me as early as some of the other ones I've tried before. Probably lasted about four to six hours before I started seeing some fine lines kind of creep in underneath the eye. So not too bad, but I wouldn't say it would be something that if I needed to use a product like that, I would place it underneath the eye if that makes sense. Next, let's talk about a mascara. This is from Kat Von D and this is the Go Big or Go Home Vegan Mascara. This is something I got from Influencer actually, so I got it free to try. And I must say this is another disappointing product for me. When I applied it to my lashes, it didn't lengthen them at all. It does thicken a bit, but it doesn't really lengthen. So I had to pair this with other mascaras every time. Also, I'm finding that it's kind of a drier formula than I thought. Like I'm worried that it's drying out already. So when I apply this to the lashes, about a week in of trying it, I would say, I noticed it significantly get drier in the formula. So I was wondering if this was gonna expire really quickly compared to some other products. So I'm a bit disappointed in that. I will not purchase this for sure. Um, this isn't one I would recommend to you guys either because it's just way too drying and it's also kind of like crumbles throughout the day a touch, like there's some flakiness underneath the eyes. This is one for me that's just, Nah. Next, I wanna update you guys on this RMS Beauty lipstick. This is in the shade Magic Hour. And this is one that I was surprised about. I did haul this after watching Kourtney Kardashian's uh, Vogue video. And this is one that has a bit of a stiffer formula. It is creamy, but it's much more stiff in the tube. So I do have much creamier lip products in my collection, but this is the shade of Magic Hour. It is super nice. I have been really impressed with the shade. I love it. I think that it suits me really nicely. I thought it was gonna be super light, but it definitely isn't. But what I can tell you is that this takes some time to warm up. So when you're kind of first starting with the first swipe of your lip, you really wanna kind of slowly do multiple strokes because I find that it tugs a little bit at the beginning, especially when you first open it. So now mine is getting creamier as I'm using it, but it is still a stiffer formula than I'm used to. Next, let's talk about the Hourglass Lip Glosses. This is their new Unreal line, and this is so nice. It is lip gloss I'm wearing today. I love it, you guys. It has a slight mintiness to it. Very, very pigmented. I do love how it lasts decent for a lip gloss. Probably about four hours with some like drinking and light eating, so it's not terrible. Um, but it's certainly not a stain. So you do have to apply it throughout the day if you're wanting something, you know, for a longer period, like eight, 10, 12 hours, something like that. But this shade is gorgeous. This is in the shade Truth. I am absolutely obsessed and I will definitely purchase more of them, I'm thinking, because they're so lovely. So I'm just gonna show you guys the swatch here. Here we have Truth. It is so pretty, dead. Like it's glossy. It's actually not sticky either. That is the one thing that I love about this. It's not sticky. I've been obsessed with this. This is another winner from Hourglass. If you haven't checked these out, there's tons of shades as well. Definitely check them out. The next product is from Bite Beauty. This is the Agave Lip Balm. And you guys, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> 
This is one that I'm like, oh, I have no idea. It is fairly sticky for a balm. I'll show you kind of the integrity of mine right now. So it is kind of like getting a little bit sticky along the edge. It has a strong smell of agave syrup. And obviously, I mean, it's the whole point. The agave line smells like it. That makes sense. But it's very strong. For me, I'm not the biggest fan of that smell. But it does hydrate my lips and moisturize them. But it's definitely a thicker formula than I thought. So this product in particular is kind of more so for an everyday balm. And I think this would be better for winter months because of how thick it really is. This I've been using at night more so as a lip mask because of how thick it is. And I don't mind the bullet. I do think it's okay, but this is not necessarily my absolute most favorite thing ever. When it comes down to this or the Laneige, I probably just get the Laneige anyway. So that's kind of my verdict on this one. Next, I have a couple Tom Ford products to talk about. We do have this new Soleil Glow Bronzer. This is in the shade Terra, number two. This is a lovely one, you guys. I've been using this one constantly too, and this is a stunning shade. Ugh, the sheen of this is lovely. It's so blendable, it's like buttery. So out of the two, between the Tom Ford and the Lomcomb, I do like the Tom Ford one slightly better because of the smoothness of it. So you really can't go wrong, but when it comes to the quality, I do think the Tom Ford one is slightly smoother. Next, I wanna talk about this Sheer Cheek Duo from Tom Ford. This is number five, Lism. These are two blushes, they are gorgeous. I am wearing the top blush today in my look and I love it. I think it's very nice and natural. I do use a denser blush brush to pick these up. They're stunning, they blend out really well. Here are the two blush shades beside each other. We have the top one and the bottom one there. The top one is definitely more of a peachy pink. The bottom one is much more of like a candy pink, but I love both of them. They are so pretty and they both perform equally on the cheek. They're very good quality. Next, we have the Tom Ford Accomplice Powder. The shade that I picked up is number 50. And this is supposed to be a glowy product. And what I will tell you guys is Based on my impressions of this one, it's much more of a drier formula than I thought it would be. So on drier skin types, this I do think is going to emphasize maybe some dryness even further. It's not gonna last that long on the skin. For me, this didn't last very long either because it did lean more drier even on my skin being normal. This one I've just been a little bit disappointed with. It's not a bad product, especially if you have oily skin. I think oily skin ladies would love this. It's underwhelming and not really a favorite of mine. So this one I don't think I'd recommend to you guys. I do think that it's one that you can skip. Now let's talk about the Biba palette. This is from Natasha Denona and I've been using this constantly, you guys. This is definitely a winner in my books. I feel like all the shades perform beautifully on the lid. I'm obsessed with it. I think this is a stunning addition to my collection. And this is one that for the most part, I use these top two rows the most. I don't know. It's just more of like the Jenna colors, but I have dabbled in on these grays and stuff a little bit, and I just barely touched into spot. So not too much, but what I can say is that these shades perform super well. There's a little bit of some minor, like some of them need to be a touch more built up than others, especially the mattes, but it's not noticeable enough to be like this shade is definitely a dud you know what I mean they're just like slightly a little bit imperfect with certain shades but I still think all of them are very good quality they're all consistently pigmented and I love that now let's talk about more Tom Ford we do have three quads here to update you guys on the first one is number four honeymoon this is a gorgeous color scheme as you can see very sultry very beautiful the second one is called body heat this one has a little bit of a cooler sultriness to it but still absolutely stunning and the other one is suspicion this one has some golds in it some gorgeous like deep golds light golds I'm obsessed with that one as well so out of all three of them I have been enjoying all of them very consistently I do think that when it comes to formula all three of these are consistent across the board they all have that glowy sheenness to them but I pro tip with this one and I'm not really a pro I don't know why I'm saying that but when it comes to applying these to the lid, if you're using a cream base, like a smoothing primer, such as the Smashbox one, for instance, um, the Urban Decay Eye Potion, like that one, those I find, they're okay, but I don't find the longevity of these shadows can actually go the distance with those types of primers. I do find that I get some cracking, especially in my hooded eyes when I'm using more of a creamier, like hydrating primer versus a mattifying primer. So when I'm using a concealer as a primer and I'm mattifying it down, really, really setting it, I find that these shadows last way longer on my eyelids versus 
a creamy hydrating one. They just move around too much, they break apart, and I do find that they only last about six hours, whereas a mattifying one will bring me closer to that eight to 10 mark range. So that way it just gives the maximum longevity impact on the lid. Next, let's talk about a highlighter. This is from Marc Jacobs, and out of the whole collection that he did, like the most recent runway one, this is by far the most standout product to me. This highlighter is super gorgeous. I love it. It's like a vanilla kind of like beautiful icy vanilla. This highlighter is going to go the distance though. Like you don't need very much for it to be like, bam, right in your face right away. I do think that it also has a tendency to expose some texture if you're layering this constantly. So just keep that in mind. But I almost find that I don't need to layer it too much because it's already right there. So this is one that's going to be hard to keep subtle is basically what I'm trying to say. Okay, this is two swipes of the powder. And as you can see, it's basically white. So that's a finger application, obviously, like it's not a brush, but keep in mind, you want a very diffused hair brush and you wanna go incredibly light-handed for this. Next, let's talk about a foundation. This is the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Foundation, and this is one that I was actually pretty surprised about too. I was expecting this to be just as glowy as the Guerlain Natural Glow. It is not. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I think it was just a false impression that I had in my head. This does have a, a flawless finish for sure. I would say it's a true medium. It leans for me like medium to full. So it's not le medium to light. It would be medium to full, if anything. So it's a little bit heavier than I'm used to, but the shade is a touch more yellow than I thought it would be. So the 2N1 Cashew, in my personal opinion, leans more yellow than a true neutral, which is okay. I was able to make it work. I do think that it's possible if you have the NC15 to 20 roughly skin tone like me. And this is one as well that I feel like has that nice subtle radiance, but it's not too much. It lasts a long time. I don't feel like it cracks at all very easily and like wrinkles or anything or breaks apart. Very, very impressed with this one. And I'm now understanding why so many people love it. Okay, you guys, let's get to probably one of the most disappointing products that I just recently hauled. And this is the Omega Shadows from the Runway Collection from Marc Jacobs. We do have three shades in here. The first one is Rose. It's a gorgeous, like bright pink. I love this color. Then we have the Smoke shade, which is this one. This one is more of like a greeny blue, like kind of gray, like mixture shade. It is so nice. This shade I was, oh, the highest hopes for. And the last one is the purple. This one is in violet. And this one is also a radiant, gorgeous purple. Now, I do think that I was misinformed as a consumer when I was purchasing these. These are very much a light wash of pigment. They are not super pigmented. Like if you're going to grab a colorful shadow like the Anastasia Riviera palette where it has those purples, those pinks, they have bam pigment like right away. These are very much a light wash. But this is kind of what it looks like on the hand here. Like it looks really bright on the hand, but when they apply to the lid, they need multiple, multiple layers and the patchiness is very evident. So this is something that I was a little bit disappointed in personally. I don't know how I'm going to use these. I'm going to figure it out <laughs> because I'm like, shoot, I'm so disappointed. Next, I want to talk about this gorgeous healthy glow powder from Chanel. I just recently hauled this as well. So nice. I love the vintage packaging of this one. The shade that I picked up is number 20. This is the Le Beige Collection one as well. So this is a pressed powder, you guys. I'm obsessed with it. It's like a sheer pressed powder that has just a touch of that like glowiness to it. It's not super glowy or anything, but it just sets the makeup beautifully. And I do like how it doesn't add any like existing color to your foundation. It is a colored powder just slightly. So just know that it comes in a variety of shades, but it's stunning. It's gorgeous. It doesn't add a whole lot of coverage. It just sets beautifully. So I love this. Last but not least, let's talk about another beautiful product. And this is the Backstage Primer from Dior. This is going to be released very soon, if not already released this week, I believe. And this is so, so stunning on the skin, you guys. It is moisturizing. It's smoothing. It doesn't feel like silicone, but it almost has a little bit of that slight silicone slip to it, but it's not like that. It's a cream. So it's really, really interesting. It is a light pink as well on the skin here. So as you can see, it is a like slightly pinky beige white primer. And when you smooth it into the skin, I mean, hi, 
<laughs> it is so, so nice, you guys. I'm obsessed with it. It does have a slight perfume, but so, so faint that I don't think it would bother people that have any scent issues. It is just so lovely. So I honestly think I've been blown away by this. This is amazing. This is a great product, you guys. I just recently reviewed the new um, Glow Face Palette from them as well, another amazing product. So this backstage line is really, really good, you guys. Like, I'm definitely obsessed with it. Anyways, guys, that is it for my huge hits and misses update. Let me know down below your thoughts on all these products. Of course, my hauls consisted of a little bit more than this, so I am still testing out all of the other products that I've been hauling recently. So definitely stay tuned for all of my reviews on that. Go check out Samantha's video. Give her some love and subscribe. I would love for you to go and show her the same kindness and love that you do me every single day. And until my next video, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys. But somewhere there's a light inside of us It shows